c'è 105 mi casa Metti a palla 105 fai sentire che ci sei Tu ci sei C'è 105 mi casa Hi Noel, Hi. We, we met a few times, but we have met a few times. This is the first time since you are champion again with Manchester City, I mean. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> How did you celebrate the victory of the Premier League? Uh, well, I, funnily enough, I was at the last game in Brighton and then the, ne- the very next day I had to fly to Tokyo. Ah, what uh, a pity. I was on tour. <laughs> well, no, because when I was in Brighton, i got invited into the locker room with the with the players okay. and I celebrated with the players ah, okay. which was like just the most amazing experience so ever cool. and so I had cool. my two sons with me and my best mate and my wife and uh we had a fucking great time it's a family stuff now yeah yeah, yeah of course <laughs> best player of the league best player in the league last season Bernardo Silva Silva yeah okay and and, and you know mm, Guardiola, this is the last football question, I promise. Okay. Guardiola is considered one of the best coaches in the world. One of the, who, who are the others? He's the best. <laughs> okay, okay. He's the best coach in the world. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about music. We have um, mm, listened to Blessed Star Dancing during the summer. Uh, tell me something about this new EP. Uh, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit more electronic. Uh, It's a bit sounds a bit like late 80s acid house slash acid house rock. Okay. Uh, uh it sounds very Mancunian to my ears. Um lots of people are gonna fucking hate it. Why? Because they're idiots. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> But what does the idea of this EP come from? Well, we, I was on the road and I had new material and it it was too early to put to make another album. Okay. And it was just like I had a bit of time in the studio and I recorded some songs and it was the idea was, well, hang on a minute. By the time we get to Christmas, I'll have put out three EPs with nine original songs. So it's it's like uh, an album. Quite an album. It's like an album okay. without putting an album out. And uh I You can only do it if you've got the material. And of course, because I'm a solo artist, I can just go and do it. You know, I play all the instruments myself, so I just go okay. into the studio. I'm done in a couple of days. Okay. Yeah. But because um, there's a part of the industry that says that music will be a matter of singles, no more album in the future. So they say. What do yeah. you think about it? I think for artists like me, we'll still make records. I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 there may, I may, you know, like, like next year, i probably think of making an album because they're like signposts in your career. But I think I think for n- new bands, maybe the album will die. Yeah. Which is a shame, but it's the way the it, music is. It's different from newcomers, obviously. Oh, yeah, I'd hate, yeah, I'd hate to be a new artist starting off now. I'd hate it. Yeah. It would just wouldn't be, I don't know. I, saying that, if they don't know any better, then they don't know what it was like before. <laughs> but uh, f- for those of us that have come from the 90s, you know, it's um, the music business is a bit, it's a bit strange, yeah. the way things are put out there. But um, I'll, still make, I'll still make albums, yeah, for sure. Hey, you were talking about your little songs. I think they are 10, something like that. The what? 10, My songs? 12, yeah. Uh, uh, now, let me get this right. The little ones. The little ones. Uh, what? Oh, fuck. One is either, I think he's either 10 or 11. Okay. I think he's 11 soon. Okay. And I think, or is he 12? Fuck. They're either 9 and 11 or 10 and 12. <laughs> okay. Between these, in seven. this range. One of them could be 7. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I've got okay. a daughter who's she's like yeah, but, but nine, the question 17 is, or something. What, what kind of music they listen to? Oh, they listen to grime. Grime. Yeah, the boys listen to uh, whatever's on the national radio. So whatever's on like the, the big radio station, Radio One, they listen to Stormzy and yeah. all that kind of, Yeah, they love Stormzy and Skepta and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my daughter listens to, she used to be into Justin Bieber and all that okay. kind of thing and One Direction. And now she's into me. Yeah, but how, how do, no, this is a serious question. How do they relate to the greatness of the father? Well, they, to them, it just doesn't mean anything to them because they've... I've really? Been in, well, I've been in their life since the minute they opened their eyes. So, on the one hand, 
they see me on stage, and I'm I'm assuming they think it's fucking great because yeah. it is. But they see me more away from the stage, so they see me every day, like in the morning when yeah, I'm not but, showered. But Google also uh, for them. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, of course, of course. But uh, well, I guess they think. I mean, hopefully they think I'm pretty cool, but uh, I just think they see me as their dad. Okay. You know, simple. It's like my wife; she just sees me as, you know, her boyfriend. That's it. She's not interested in what I do. Okay. She's just like fucking whatever. You know. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Twenty-five years from the Oasis debut album, mm. and also I think ten years from Oasis split up. Mm. Which of these two things you you think most? Do I think of most? Yeah. I don't think of either at all. I mean, so, you know, I didn't know it was 25 years of definitely maybe until about six months ago when somebody told me. And uh, I don't I don't really think about Oasis breaking up. I live in the moment for today and that's it. But um, both great, great significant moments in my life, the release of that album and the day that I quit Oasis were great days. Both of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, um, yeah, in the case of, you know, definitely maybe, you it was released and you had your whole life in front of you. And then when I left Oasis, I was lucky enough to have a new life in front of me, which you don't really Quite get. Quite the same. <laughs> well, it's better. Mm. It's better. So I, I'm lucky enough to have had two careers, which is that one and this one. And uh, I... I've I fucking loved being an Oasis. I loved it right up until the point where I thought it's not making me happy anymore. Mm. And then so I stopped doing that and I started doing this and this makes me more happy than I could ever have imagined. You know? Ah, so, we see, we see. Yeah. And and talking about these two careers, uh, as you said, which is the main difference? If there's one, I don't uh, know. Well, I mean, it's, surely it's obvious. Yeah. You know, no, I mean, if, if, if one is main. Uh, well... The main difference is Oasis was, uh, it was a band and we were all in the band together. Uh, this is just my thing and I run it. And I run my own record label and that's it. So the main thing is it's, this is an express, the High Flying Birds is an expression of who I am and Oasis was an expression of who we were, you know, so that's yeah, the main difference. Of course, of course. And do you like the way that music is listened nowadays, so-called liquid music? Well, <clears throat> all I can tell you is this, that people don't buy records anymore, right? But I look out on a crowd of people who come to see me and it's all children, the fucking mm. tiny kids, Yeah. right? So they don't buy records. So they wouldn't be at the gig if it wasn't for streaming. So there's, there's, there's positives to it and there's also negatives to it. But, um, doesn't matter what you how you listen to music but if as long as you listen to it do you know what i mean i think i don't really think of i don't i try not to overthink any of it but i will say i never expected to have so many young people at, in my audience ever that's a good thing it is a yeah, amazing thing, thing. Um, i think for me for example you are rock and roll when i think about rock and roll you are one of them in my mind Okay. as icon okay. what's what's rock and roll for you it's a spirit it's not it's not really it's a to me anyway rock and roll is freedom it's freedom of thought and freedom of expression um and it can mean many things to different people you know some people think rock and roll is smoking cigarettes and wearing leather jackets and being a fucking mm. arsehole do you know what i mean um or drinking jack daniels and being a fucking sexist or being a misogynist fucking arsehole with ideas of women from the 70s. But um, <laughs> for me, it's just about freedom to, as an artist, to be and do whatever the fuck you want to do. You know? And to me, what I'm doing now is totally fucking rock and roll. But people would yeah, say... Because well, it's it, totally freedom. Because it's, yeah. it's, free, it's free expression and, it, and it's not bound... Nobody's... Nobody's telling me what to do. You know, I, I see a lot of people who are owned in their hearts by their record companies. Their record companies tell them what music to make. Their fans demand that they make this kind of music. And they're owned. And they're in creative chains. Um, I broke away from that 10 years ago and was like, you know what? Fuck those guys. 
Yeah. And there are people who remain with us even uh, if they are gone. I'm talking about David Bowie. Mm. W- what the most important thing he talked to you? David Bowie? Yeah. To be interested in other things. I think there was a time 20 years ago when somebody would have asked me to check something out and it was fucking jazz or whatever and I'd have just dismissed it completely. But now I'm more interested in it because, not because of David Bowie, but he was interested in everything. And you might not like it, but you should be interested in it. And I think um, I think I'm... I think I'm not afraid of pushing the musical boundaries a little bit. Because when people, when, when people hear this is the place, a lot of people, a lot of Oasis fans, are not going to like it. But I see that as a challenge, you know what I mean? So when I'm in the studio and I'm making this music but no one else has heard it, you know, you kind of got to be brave and say, yeah, fuck them. You know what I mean? Mm. I love it. This is a part of me. And if they don't like it, fuck them too. Yeah. You know? Maybe it's also a question of age. I don't know. Well, a- age Maybe is, now it's age. It's age, age, age is a funny thing because people, the older that you get, people do tend to pick on you more. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Madonna, for instance. Yeah. People pick on Madonna yeah. because she doesn't give a fuck. Whether you like her music or not is irrelevant. You know what I mean? She's fucking Madonna at the end yeah. of the day. And uh, she was one of the great artists of our lifetime. You know what I mean? And um, and because she's she's sixty or however old she is, people are like want her to go away now. You know. And uh, fair play to her. She's fucking defiant in the face of it. And I think age is a is a funny thing. You know. It's a funny thing, but I, 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 I'm enjoying growing older. I'm enjoying it. I kind of feel better. I think I look better. I am better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My last I am, I'm genuinely better than I was 20 years ago. I'm better than I was 10 years ago. Really? Yeah, for fucking sure. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. My last question is uh, about this is the place. Yes. Uh, and what I, I would like to know is, talking about places, countries... Uh, cities, I don't know. Is environments are, are, are important for writing song? Of course, yeah. In your experience, also, absolutely. If you if you're in a if you're in a, I mean, I've been in thousands of recording studios all over the world, and I can tell the minute I walk into a studio I've not been in whether I'm going to do anything that's great. Ah, really? You can tell. You can just tell. And I'm in the process now of building a recording studio in London. And uh, I've committed to building it and I'm going to be there for the rest of my life and I'm just fucking praying <laughs> that when it's finished, it's going to be good. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, but yeah, I can, I, I, can, I can sense when I walk into a dressing room whether we're going to have a great night or not. Sometimes you just walk into a room and go, yeah. So it's so important environment. Absolutely. Yeah. It, I mean, for other people are different. Do you know what I mean? And, um, you know, sometimes you would, you would go into an arena when we were playing gigs and you just go, nah. No, I'm not feeling it. And then suddenly you go into a, a theatre and you just go, it's going to be great. You can just feel it. You yeah, feel cool. the energy. Um, so your environment actually dictates what you sound like. Because, for instance, when I was in a stadium rock band, we made stadium rock music because yeah, that's yeah, the environment course. we played in. Yeah. Now I'm not in a stadium rock band. I play all kinds of different venues and my music is quite different. So Interesting. So yeah. interesting. Thank you, Niall. It's always a pleasure talking to you. See you next time. See you next time.